Hello and welcome to a new Precious Plastic video. In today's video we're going to build a motored injection machine developed by Andres from El Tornillo here in Bogota, a long-standing verified Precious Plastic member. And I'm so excited for today's video because it's the first of its kind. It's the first time that we are actually sharing a machine that has been designed and thought entirely from a community member. And we're gonna do much more of this because we know that you guys are designing and developing incredible machines and molds that the entire precious plastic movement can benefit from. And El Tornillo has been kind enough to share his machine and his knowledge, the precious plastic style, free and open source, so that all of you can benefit from this knowledge and tackle the big plastic waste problem. And overall, we're gonna be doing more of this, allowing the community to share how they do things, to have a precious plastic that is developed by its community, decentralized and independent. So if you have a machine or a mold that you're particularly proud of, make sure to get in touch so that we can help you to open source it, so that more people can use your knowledge to tackle the big plastic waste problem. So this machine that you will see today is built on top of the precious plastic injection machine that we released back in 2016. And that machine is great for small productions and educational workshops. Thousands of people have replicated that machine and built their businesses using it. So the main difference between these two machines is how you apply pressure. With the injection machine basic, we're using a hand-powered lever to apply pressure. Whereas with this one, we're using a motor to do so. So the injection machine basic is great for small productions and workshops. However, if you have a bigger production to work on, it's kind of heavy on your body and it might be worth to consider to build this motored injection machine, as it's gonna save a lot of physical work. Additionally, this machine helps you to output more pressure, helping you to make products that are more fine and detailed. And I would say generally this machine is gonna cost you more to build and it's slightly more difficult to build than the basic injection machine. So when you're considering which machine to build, make sure to really consider, you know, based on your project, which one makes the most sense for you. And hopefully by the time that you're watching this video, we're gonna have a lot of motored injection machines on the Precious Plastic Bazaar. So you can buy directly from machine shops near you. And if you can, make sure to buy from someone near you so that we can reduce the impact of shipping. But if you're ready to build this machine, make sure to watch the whole video and go on the how-to, where you're gonna find the download kit with all the technical drawings, cut file, 3D files, and everything you need to replicate this machine. And additionally, make sure to mark the how-to as useful and comment there so that we can help Andres to improve and develop the machine further. And today I got additional great news for you. For the first time ever, this machine is gonna be shared on Patreon first, giving our patrons early access for the first six months. On the dedicated post on Patreon, you'll find all the download files, plus a breakdown of all the costs that went into open sourcing this machine. And with this, we're really trying to find a viable way to support open source development. So if you wanna access the drawings early, or want to support open source development, go on Patreon and support Precious Plastic there. All right, now back to the video. Okay, without any further ado, here is Andres, and he's gonna show us how to build the motored injection machine. Hi, Precious Plastic. My name is Andres. I'm from El Tornillo. And today we're going to build this machine, a motored injection machine. To build it, we're going to make six steps. First, we're going to make the frame. Then we're going to assemble the mold jack in the middle at the top then we're going to make the piston. The next step is going to be the barrel. Then we're going to make the motor, and finally, we're going to wire up all the electronics. So, chapter one is to build the frame. The frame is made in three parts. The base, which will have some wheels for easy moving, the middle part, which is going to hold the mold jack, and the top part, which is going to hold the piston, the barrel, the motor, and the electronics. So the first step is to cut all the parts. You have to cut some angles, some round tubes, some square tubes, and some metal sheets. You'll find all the drawings and all the measures on the download kit. Now that we have all the parts cut, we have to weld them and put it together. We start with the base part. Make sure to make all the parts square and flat. On the top, we have drilled four holes of six millimeters or quarter inch, these ones are to connect all the frames together. And on the bottom, we have drilled four holes of half an inch or 12 millimeters. The measure of the holes in the bottom depend basically on the wheels you find. So make sure you get them first, uh, measure them, and then drill the holes. Now we are done with the base. We're going to continue with the middle part of the frame. So this is the second part of the frame. It will hold a jack and it's made of two parts the frame and the mold base that is going to push the mold up against the barrel. 
So, with the parts that we cut before, we weld them together and we build this frame. It's a very basic cube made by angles and in the, in the base we used a wider angle to hold all the pressure of the jack. In the middle there is this bridge that we hold the jack. We build it with two angles so it will hold all the strength. The second part is this base. It will hold the mold and push it against the barrel by the jack. It's made of a metal sheet of six millimeters or a quarter inch and it has welded these two square tubes that work as guides inside the frame and we have this round tube welded in the middle where the jack is going to be connected. Now we're going to drill four holes here to connect with the top part and four holes coincident with the ones that we drill in the base. We're going to attach two springs to this plate uh, that will pull back the jack when the injection is finished. For that, we're going to drill two holes here and two here in the frame. Great, now that we have finished the second part, we're going to continue with the last part of the frame. So this is the top part of the frame. It's meant to hold the piston, the barrel, an electronic box and the motor. So for this last part, we welded all the cutted pieces. We used angle bars of one inch wide or 25 millimeters. And for the front panel, we used a metal sheet of one millimeter thickness. To continue, we're going to drill four holes in the bottom. These holes will match with the middle part of the frame. And in the front panel, we are going to drill two holes for some electronics. And one last part is the connector of the motor. Make sure you have your motor measures so they fit uh, with the holes of the frame. So this connector is a frame that will hold the motor. It's going to be connected to the frame. It will go here in the frame and it can slide to adjust the tension of the motor. Okay, so these are the three parts of the frame. Now we're going to paint them and put them together. Okay, so we have received uh, the parts painted from the workshop. I like using powder coating because of all the colors and options we have and the finish. Okay, we are done with the frame. Let's go for the next chapter. So now we are going to start with chapter two. We are going to build the mold area. We're going to use a two-tone jack and it's going to be the base where we put the mold and push it against the barrel. After the injection, there are going to be two springs that will pull back the jack to its original position. Okay, for this part, we're going to use the second part we did on the frame, a car jack. We're using a two-tone car jack. The base for the mold, two springs and the lever of the car jack and four plastic caps for square tubes of one inch. Okay, so now we're going to put it all together. First, we're going to put the lids in the square tubes of the base of the mold. Uh, these square tubes work as guides and the square lids help to slide inside the frame. Now we put the jack on the frame and then we are going to put the mold base on the top of the jack. Make sure the head of the jack gets inside the cylinder. Finally, we're going to put the springs in the holes that we drilled earlier. A nice tip is to weld the lever of the car jack together and to make a handle for the jack valve. Okay, so this is how you build the mold area. Now let's get to the next chapter. Okay, so now we're in chapter three. We're going to build the piston system. This is the most important part of the machine and the main difference between the original precious plastic machine. In this machine, the plastic is going to be pushed by the piston that is going to be moved by the motor. It works with a belt that is moved by the motor and it will spin a pulley in the center of the machine that with a thread system will move up and down the piston. This system will apply more pressure so you can get more detail and fine results in your injection. Also, more pressure will mean that you can design molds that are more advanced or more complicated. Okay, so this is the basic concept of the piston. While the pulley turns, the piston comes up and down. Okay, so for this part, we're gonna need 52 centimeters of a two by two inches square tube or 50 millimeters, 61 centimeters of an Acme threaded bar, two bolts that would fit with the threaded bar, five centimeters of a round bar of one inch diameter or 25 millimeters, five centimeters of a flat bar, one inch wide or 25 millimeters, one block of low friction plastic. Its measures are 45 millimeters by 45 millimeters by 25 millimeters wide, two conical bearings, inside diameter 28 millimeters and outside diameter 52 millimeters, one pulley with inner diameter of 36 millimeters, 
five centimeters of a hollow bar of 32 millimeters outside diameter and 22 millimeters inside diameter and a metal disc of 125 millimeters. Uh, as always, you will find in the download kit all the measures. So we're gonna start making the threaded bore pulley. For this part, you're gonna need the pulley, the two bolts, the hollow bar, and the two bearings. Okay, so for this part, we're gonna use a third nut and we're gonna screw it in the threaded bar. Then we're going to screw the second nut and tighten it against each other. Then we're gonna put the next nut and thread it against the first nut. So it should look something like this. This is going to be mounted in the lathe and you have to turn the hexagonal faces to a 28 millimeters external diameter to fit the bearings. Then we're going to use the hollow bar. We have to mill a key seat on the hollow bar. We have to cut some bores in the lathe to fit the turn nuts that we did in the last step. Then we have to make a bevel to receive the welding. To prepare all these parts before welding, we need to put them together like this. You have to tighten the first nut against the extra nut, then connect the hollow bar, then tighten the second nut. In this way, you will have the threads matching inside the part. Now we weld the two turn nuts and the hollow bar together. After this step, we have to clean the weldings so the bearing will sit fit on this part. At the end, you will have a part like this. To finish this part, we have to turn the outside of the hollow bar to fit inside the pulley. At the end, this is what the part should look like. Now we are going to make the second part of the piston system. For this part, we're going to use the threaded bar, the 25 millimeters or one inch diameter round bar, the one inch or 25 millimeters wide flat bar, and the low friction plastic block. First, we're going to drill and tap a half inch thread inside the 25 millimeters bar. Then we're going to drill and tap a quarter inch thread in one side of the bar for a grub screw. Then in one end of the threaded bar, we're going to make a thread of half inch or 12 millimeters to fit with the hole that we did earlier. In the other end of the threaded bar, we're going to turn a cylinder of 3 eighths of an inch diameter and 2 millimeters height. And in the flat bar, we're going to drill in the center a 3 eighths of an inch or 9 millimeters diameter hole in the center. Then we're going to drill two holes on the ends of the flat bar of 3 sixteenths of an inch or 4 millimeters. And final step, we weld it together and clean the weldings. Now with the plastic block, you have to mill a one inch wide channel or 25 millimeters wide and drill two holes that match the flat bar. Finally, you have to attach the plastic block to the top of the bar with two bolts. Okay, this part is also done. To recap, we have the threaded pulley, the piston body, and we're going to continue with the last part of the piston system. Now we're going to continue with the last part, which is the case. So for this final part, we're going to use the square tube, the metal disc, and a bearing. Okay, so the first step is to put the square tube in the lathe and face the ends square. In the lathe, we're going to bore some holes according to the drawings. In one side, it's going to fit the bearing. In the other side, it is going to fit the square tube. Finally, we're going to drill four holes around the disc. The last step for this part is to weld together the disc and the square tube. Now that it's all welded, we have to paint it and this is how it should look at the end. Now that we have all the parts ready, it's time to assemble. First, we have to add the mechanical brakes to the lower part of the case. We have to bend a spring like this according to the template that it's in the download kit. Bicycle spokes work perfectly for this part. We need to drill four holes, two for the switch and two for the spring. The function of this switch is to cut the energy of the motor and stop the piston when it reaches its lower position. Now that we have all the parts, we're going to assemble it. We have the threaded bar inside the case. So it should come out at the other side. Then we're going to insert the first bearing inside then we're going to insert the threaded pulley. The bearing should go in one end of the threaded pulley. And finally, we're going to insert the head in the end. Okay, so now that it's all together, we're going to add another brake here to stop the piston when it reaches its highest position. Okay, so the piston system is ready. Now we can go to the next step. So we did the frame, we did the piston, we did the jack mold. Now we're going to make the heating barrel. 
This is where the plastic is going to get molten. It's the same size as the precious plastic machine. The difference is that in the top, it's going to have the connection to the piston. Also, it will have a conical nozzle, so the connection of the mold is going to be super fast. Okay, so for this part, we're going to use a hollow bar, 35 millimeters outside and 25 millimeters in the inside, a metal disc of five inches diameter or 125 millimeters. We're going to use one bearing, a round bar of one inch and a quart or 36 millimeters, four bars of three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters. And we're going to use flat bar of one inch wide. Also, we're going to use one metal sheet of one millimeter to do the hopper. So the first part of the barrel is the nozzle. We're going to use this round bar of one inch and a quarter or 36 millimeters to make the nozzle. You can find the drawings on the download kit. So we have to make a thread in one end of the nozzle that will fit in the barrel. And at the other end, we're going to make a conical turning on a 45 degrees angle. On the center, we're going to drill a through hole of eight millimeters or five sixteenths of an inch. For the next step, we're going to use the round hollow bar. First, we're going to make up an inner thread that fits the nozzle. On the other side, we're going to measure and mark to do the open for the upper. For the upper, we're going to use a one millimeter metal sheet. First, we're going to cut it. Make sure you use the template we have in the drawings. Then we're going to bend it to its shape. Finally, grind the bottom edge so the upper will match with the cut on the barrel. Next, we're going to cut two pieces of nine centimeters of the flat bar. To make the holes match with the hopper, you, we can clamp it with a C-clamp and drill matching holes. Finally, we're going to bolt together the flat bars and the hopper and weld them with the barrel. In this way, the brackets will stay in the right angle. Finally, unbolt the hopper and let's paint it. For the next part, we're going to use the metal disc. First, as in the piston system, we're going to bore some holes to fit the bearing in one side. And in the other side, we're going to bore a hole to fit the barrel. And finally, we're going to drill four holes around the disc for the spacers. To complete the heating chamber, we're going to weld together the metal disc and the barrel. When you do this, make sure to align the upper entrance and the holes of the spacers. Okay, so we have the hopper painted and this is how the barrel should look. Finally, to complete this part, we're going to drill some nine millimeter holes or three eighths of an inch in the three quarters or 19 millimeters bars. To define the height of the spacers, we need to pre-assemble the piston system and the barrel with both bearings and the threaded pulley and measure the distance between the discs. Make sure you measure it in four different sides to get an average. Now that we have our machine assembly, we're going to do the electrical wiring. It has a box in the side which holds the heating controls, the on and off switch, and the switch that controls the piston up and down. So here we have all the parts for the electrical wiring. On my right, we have all the parts for the motor, and on my left, we have all the parts for the heating. For the motor, we're going to need two conductors, one three-position switch, three cable stoppers, one plug, some cable, and one four-line connector. For the heating system, we're going to use two PID kits, which are the temperature control, two thermocouples, and two SSR. To attach the thermocouples to the barrel, we will use these metal straps. We also have one on and off switch and some cable. So I'm going to wire this up. Make sure you check the schematics in the download kit uh, so you can see how all this is put together. Okay, so we have the electrical box done. If you have any doubts, please comment in the how-to. Uh, now let's move to the next step. Okay, so we're going to do the motor assembly. The motor will move the pulley to move up and down the piston and push the plastic inside the mold. Depending on the power of the motor, you can apply more pressure in the barrel, which means you can inject in more complex molds. Okay, so here's the motor. I bought it new from a store here in Colombia and but if you want, you can get one second hand. Now we're using one monophasic horsepower motor that works with Colombian voltage, that is 120. Make sure you check your power supply locally so you can get the, the right motor. So the motor comes with a reductor and its final speed will be 170 RPM. And if you have any doubts, please comment in the, the how-to so we can help you out. In the inside, you will find printed the setup of the motor 
Make sure you identify the two ends to make it run forward and backward. This is the connector that we built before and it's used to mount the motor on the frame. And with these wires, we're going to connect it to the box. Great, so we have the motor done. We add the bracket for the frame and we wired everything and we added the connector for the electrical box. Let's move on to the next chapter. Okay, so we are ready, we did the frames. We did the jack, we did the piston and the barrel, we did the motor and the electrical box. Now let's put all together and assembly. Okay, first step is to put the wheels on the bottom part of the frame. The second step is to fix the middle part on top of the bottom part. And the third step is to put the top part above all of it. Now we're going to add the barrel to the frame and drill some holes in the frame that match the disc. Before you drill the holes, check that the hopper will fit in place. Now let's get to the fun part. Let's put the piston on top. First, we're going to place the bearing on top of the barrel and then we're going to insert the piston. Now the next step is to add the belt. It should point towards the motor, so when you add the spacers here, it won't interfere. At this time, we're going to add the spacers and bolt everything together. To center the barrel with the jack, you can add some washers under this plate. And last step, tighten everything together. <coughs> Now it's time to put the motor in place. Okay, but this thing is heavy, so I may need some help. First, you wanna put the motor near to the barrel so you can place the belt inside the pulley. Then you have to push back the motor to tension the belt. And finally, you will tighten the bolts. So one reason why I love this system of the belt is that it works like a mechanical fuse. So, so if for any reason the piston gets stuck, that the mold is filled, or the plastic just get, got stuck. The motor will spin, but the belt will just slide and the motor will keep moving and won't get burned. Okay, so here we are in the last step of the assembly. We're going to add the electric box. Okay, so we run the first test and the machine is working properly. What we want is if we switch this up, the piston to go up, and when it reaches its stop position, this brake will cut the energy. And when we switch this down, the piston should go down and this brake will cut the energy when the piston touches the spring. If you run the test and, it, and something is not working properly, the direction of the piston or which brake cuts the energy, you can switch these terminals and that will switch every process. So you can test it until you get it right. Okay, so this is actually the last step of the assembly. Uh, just put the hopper in place and we are ready to recycle. Okay, so here's the machine. Uh, it's the V1, it's in its first stage. So I, I'm sure it, there's a lot of things that can be improved. Before you build it, I want to share with you some known issues. First, I would prefer a wider base so the machine can be more stable. Here with the motor on the top, it can be a bit unstable and can create some danger. So feel free to make a wider base. Another known issue is in the material of the axis of the piston pulley. What I use in this machine is steel, but I know it's going to wear very quickly. But now I'm going to try with one only part made of bronze. And I know that in the motor we can change some features like the speed of the motor and its power to improve it and have better and faster injections. Okay. Goodness, My yeah. goodness. Okay, so that's how you build a motor injection machine from El Tornillo. I'm so incredibly grateful for your kindness to share with the world how to build this machine. I know hundreds, if not thousands of people will be delighted to be replicating this machine so that they can save some physical effort on their bodies. And uh, yeah, to get a tackle the big plastic waste problem with one more machine in the precious plastic arsenal. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Once again, for any questions, doubts, conversation, go on the how-to, make sure to comment there. Make sure to mark it as useful so we can tell uh, El Tornillo and Andres that this was a useful piece of knowledge uh, for the world. We're gonna release another video on how to run this machine so that you can optimize how you use this machine. And we'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Ciao.